Well, Kenneth Clark was Chancellor from 1993 to 1997. He delivered some austerity budgets back then, and he is still here. And he's with us now. Good evening. Mm, glad to be here. Um, just first of all, I mean, do you sense there's a bit of austerity fatigue? I mean, maybe among your colleagues in the party. Yeah, of course. I mean, people would like to be told that we're out of trouble now and happy days are here again. And, you know, like to hear politicians offering them money in the run up to the election. But uh, the public are far more sensible than the chattering classes give them credit for. Uh, they do prefer to know where they actually are. And I think people know we're doing better than most other countries. We're about halfway through sorting out our debt and deficit. There are a lot of, lot of changes taking place in the economy because we've got to rebalance it to have a real economy for the future that can keep growth going for our children as well as ourselves. Uh, this is all a, a step on the way, actually. And I think George has actually done rather well with the publicity the last two or three years, really publicising, last two or three days, publicising things we're already doing. I mean, we are slowly putting infrastructure spending back and you, so What on. you mean by but that? There's is, a long way to go. doing well to... to, to, to flam up a lot of stuff that was... Well, I, I'm anyway. basically optimistic, so long as we stick to the course and we deal with reality and, and we don't flee from reality. I mean, the, 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 France gave way to austerity fatigue. Uh, President Hollande was elected on a totally bogus prospectus. There is no problem. It's all over now. Have a social democrat government. We're going to spend some money. We're going to protect all the unions and the public services. Everything's fine. It's now the sick man of Europe. It's the most worrying thing in Europe is the state of the French economy. Hollande knows he was elected on a lot of nonsense. He knows his party won't vote for anything else. France is in a real crisis. So I think the public in May will want to be told seriously where we go for the next few Let, years. And it's down. more hard work if we want to carry on going the direction we're going. Let's drill down into that a bit, because it's going to be quite a hair shirt parliament, the next one. Yeah, sure. And if the Conservatives win, there won't be tax rises. Uh, we won't have... We'll tighten the borrowing target. There'll be no borrowing at all. That's not the target at the moment, but there'll be no borrowing at all, a balanced budget. Um, do you think that's really plausible? It'll all happen by 2018. I mean, well, there's a is lot that of other honesty? <laughs> a lot of other things you've got to go on. We've got to do... I mean, things will take a generation, like reforming the education system, getting rid of all these skill shortages, which is far more important than all this rubbish about people yeah, coming from Eastern Europe to take deficit, skilled jobs. Is it and all achievable? Time. Is it achievable on the deficit? Uh, uh, well, it should be. But, I mean, you do have to adjust to the real state of the economy. We're in a global economy. I mean, we had a target of getting rid of the deficit in this parliament. I actually think that although it perhaps wasn't entirely planned, it was very sensible we didn't do it that quickly. I, I think had we tried, if we just said, oh, we said at the election, getting rid of the whole deficit, let's charge ahead, we would not be in the right. state we are, but in a bad on. way. But I, I think it's a legitimate target. I would aim to do it. But Get would rid you... of the deficit by 2017, <laughs> 2018. I'm confused, confused. Are you saying it's a good target and, hey, we may hit it, we may not. Or are you saying we should try and hit it? Because We should try to hit it, right. but we should now, not be oblivious to the fact that nobody knows what the state of the okay. world economy is going to be in 2016, 2017, when you're taking decisions then. How you would you You know it? as well as I do that anybody who thinks that economic forecasts of any kind, from the Bank of England, the statisticians, anybody else, are set in stone, you know, they're tablets of stone, is talking nonsense. And particularly at an unprecedented crisis, you've got to react to events. Sure. So I, I, want to, I, I really want to push you a bit on how you would hit this balanced budget. Because, so first of all, you would have no tax rises like the Chancellor. Remember when you had your budgets in the 1990s? Well, you I, were 50-50 guy. He think, said he's 80-20, yeah. and he hasn't... He now wants to go further than he, he wants think, to be... I, I, are you, has George really ruled out any kind of tax rises? Well, he says, I've no intention... I wouldn't, personally, yet. if I were him, burn my votes on that. I mean, I very much like... To avoid tax rises because it's it actually advantageous to growth at the moment you don't want to have tax rises you want consumer confidence to remain in place but I, I was chancellor when my I think my prime minister had said he was going to have tax reductions year in year out uh, by the time we got to me being chancellor I sat down to waived order papers on my first budget and I'd raised the tax burden of the United Kingdom by a bigger amount than any chancellor since the Second you, World you War. Did. Taxes yeah. sometimes go up, sometimes go right. down. It's reacting to the reality and events. So George is good at that. What He's been said, a very though, successful chancellor. You've said something very interesting, which is he should be open to tax rises. And, 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 and indeed, I, I wouldn't my, personally and, shut them out. And I'll, but I'll tell you what an, they've even done. Even before an election, I wouldn't shut them out. Well, 
they've done the reverse, actually. They promised £7 billion of tax cuts in mm -hmm. the next parliament, huge increases in the personal allowance. You heard the Prime Minister's speech at the conference. <laughs> yeah. Now, that was, it was what's called backloaded, right? It's to the end of the it's next the, parliament. It's, over, it's five on, years away. You've got to admit, that's just a meaningless promise, It's five isn't it? years you've ago, got... and if you look at what else he said, and, and I was a bit, you know, I raised my eyebrows, uh, but it's all preconditioned on having got rid of the deficit and be running a surplus okay. by that time. By that time, if that's where we've got to, and I think we've got, we were the only, we're the only potential government with the faintest chance of delivering that, then all right, you can start talking about tax cuts. And I, I do think it's not the entirety of economic policy or this deficit debt stuff. I personally think it is a precondition. You cannot possibly get back to healthy, sustainable growth with more than 5% of GDP in a running deficit. So first deficit and debt, and then all the supply size measures, the technology, right. the new industries, the science parks, the skills training, the education reforms, all that is for the longer term. That can work then You're a, if a you true do it. Fiscal conservative when it comes to that. But well, look, Keynesians but, are discredited yeah, now, aren't they? But, but, well, presidents no, are, presidents but, but, look, presidents are allowance last week. Well, so Come called on, Keynesians should be discredited. There aren't many in the Labour look, Party anymore. But I do, I do it, to... It's this escapism the French went in for. It's all right, there's no problem. It's just that everybody hasn't got enough money to spend. <laughs> we politicians will give it to them. John Maynard Keynes will be spinning in his grave I'll if tell you heard what, these latter I'll tell you what, Keynes. because it, it is interesting to look what the next parliament means in public spending cuts. So, yeah, sure. you know, big, once you... Well, what, but it's, 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 the question is, is it even faintly realistic? Well, didn't you say well, that in 2010 you, when you saw what we said? Well, I mean, We're surrounded by ask, wise you, pundits saying you can't but do that. You, you, wouldn't you agree that you made the easier cuts in the first half, in the, fir in the first parliament, yeah, yes, the than the second? Yes, the low-hanging fruit. The low-hanging fruit has been taken. Well, I, 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 I agree, I agree. In fact, fact, I offered 30% off the justice budget. Now, it was one of the truisms of politics that you can't save any money on law and order. You could never get Margaret to cut the Home Office budget. So I did 30%. Uh, and uh, Theresa, 30%. The police, there's a better police right. service and now than it was. Do you think we can there, do that there, there, again? There, do you think you can do it again? It requires good ministers who know what they're doing. What? Just good ministers? You can go on lop lopping 10, what, what, 20% what you can't, off? What, what, what you can't do is spend money you haven't got. Right. What you can't do is borrow money which the creditors utter a bit won't you know give what? you, except at a very high cost. Everybody... What you can do is, it's a process of change, sensible executive control, keeping an eye on what you're delivering, not how much money you've got to spend. As a proportion... I, that's not over yet. That's a, not over yet. It, it better not be or else we're finished. As a proportion of GDP in those departments, we're going down to levels that we haven't known since the 1930s. That's probably a good thing. Well, the 30s, really? the 30s literally? It's 38, the I think, or 48, depending on... Is the totality the of public spending down... No, 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 not the totality, no, obviously. I guess it's no, not just down, for those I guess key he's spending more than I did. I don't think the totality of public spending at the moment is down... I haven't checked okay, this. You just might a particular know. one. A particular it, it, I, one. I think the totality of public spending, we're back to about yeah. 2003, well, let's take aren't a particular we? one. We're not down to the levels I was no. used to. No, no, we're now correct. spending correct. sums of money that I would have told you were ridiculous. Correct. You're not going to be able to afford that. Defence. Do you think we can just make in the next parliament cuts in defence as big as in well, this department? The, in, in this parliament? Uh, well, I think we need a new type of defence. We made cuts, quite rightly. Because we don't need tanks in the field to face the armies. We're fighting guerrillas uh, who are uh, very difficult to distinguish from peasants in the villages where you're patrolling. It's a different type of defence. You would uh, get rid of I, tanks? I'd like to stick nuclear to... Nuclear weapons? We've you... got rid of most of the tanks. We used to have masses of tanks on the plains of Germany waiting for the Red Army to come. We haven't got any anymore. Uh, admirals always want people to salute. They Trident, want ships. Trident missiles, you, you would get rid of all of that? I would modernise Trident. I think I would keep that going because okay. you're looking too far ahead to the risk. I mean, the, the key thing is... Though, the, things the, 30 years out. The key, the key thing is, is that it's very easy to say, in abstract, we want to control the deficit and we want to get public spending down. It's just just when you're confronted with particular things like Trident nuclear weapons. Well, we weapons, haven't got time. Then everyone says, no, well, I'll keep that. Yeah, what I used this. to do is once a year sit down with the Defence Secretary or with a good Chief Secretary to help me and actually confront and go... What you, you, you were making what, what, cuts of like one or two what percent. You are, what you are touching on is the reality of the hard work of government when you're getting out of a crisis. You're asking me sensible questions about where you cut, where you don't. 
that's different from playing with the figures, saying it's all dreadful, we can't afford it, why can't we have a nice left-wing government that gives us all money? And I understand, out there, just as in France, people would love to hear the message, it's all over now, we can relax, don't listen to the Tories being so worried, ever, you know, the, green, the, the, the new dawn is here. Three, four years' time, we could have one of the strongest economies in the Western world. We're doing better than practically any other economy now, but you've got to stick at it. And George has been all right so far. And there's, I mean, we don't need this statement tomorrow. It's politics. It's not economics. The economic policy has got to be sustained. Ken Clark, pleasure talking to you. Thank pleasure. you.